I want to talk about the difference between a control volume and a control mass. And in particular, uh, how to identify either, either type of system. In the beginning of any type of uh, thermodynamic analysis, we're going to want to determine whether we're working with a control volume or a control mass. Um, a control volume is synonymous with an open system, which we'll see why in a minute, and a control mass is synonymous with a closed system. Um, a special case of a control mass uh, or closed system is an isolated system. And I'm going to start here uh, first and then move my way uh, all the way back to a control volume, which has the least uh, amount of constraints. So an isolated system, an example of which would be uh, the Joule expansion experiment, which I'll talk about uh, in more detail uh, in another video, um, is shown schematically here a schematic of an isolated system. Uh, what I have are, say, two tanks that are connected by a valve in between. Uh, one side is pressurized with uh, some kind of gas at relatively low pressure, uh, and the other side is completely evacuated. And both tanks are embedded in a thick uh, structure of some type of insulation. Isolated is used to describe this type of thermodynamic system because there are no interactions between the system, in this case, both the structure and the tanks themselves and the surroundings. Or, if we wanted to be even more specific, just the tanks uh, themselves. Now in purple, what I've drawn is uh, called a control surface. And this is really what delineates the boundary between our thermodynamic system and the surroundings, or the rest of the universe. And it's across the control surface that all interactions occur. In this particular example, there is no bulk mass transfer into or out of the system. Okay? So no mass transfer due to advection, so bulk flow, or even due to uh, diffusion. So we're assuming that the surfaces of the tanks are completely uh, impermeable, that the surface of this uh, thick insulation is completely impermeable. And this translates into the fact that um, for our thermodynamic system, uh, the mass at the beginning of a particular process is going to be the same uh, at the end of that process. So no matter what happens energetically, uh, if there are energetic interactions, the mass uh, is fixed. But a further constraint for an isolated system uh, is that in addition to no mass transfer uh, of any kind, uh, there is no energy transfer uh, at all. And um, what we'll learn in the next uh, few videos is that um, in thermodynamics, we deal with two types of energy transfer, heat and work. And for an isolated system, uh, it's completely isolated from its surroundings, so there are no interactions in terms of either heat or work. So three total constraints, no mass transfer, no heat transfer, no work transfer. Uh, so what this, again, translates into is that the mass of the system stays fixed, uh, but as well, its, its total energy stays fixed as it doesn't interact with the surroundings uh, by any means. Now, if we relax the energetic interaction uh, constraint, we can move up here to um, uh, another example. So this is uh, what's called a closed system or control mass. And um, again, the isolated system was a very specific um, sub-form of a closed system or control mass. Uh, with the energy interaction constraint, uh, which we're going to relax here. So I've, I've drawn a uh, CSTR, and a chemical engineering students should be very familiar with this. Uh, mechanical and aerospace, maybe not so much, but uh, a CSTR is nothing more than a continuously stirred tank reactor. So we may, uh, within this tank, schematic of a tank, have some kind of um, liquid or gas or other substance a gel or a slurry where a chemical reaction is occurring or we would like to occur. And um, what, what I've done here is drawn that attached to the tank, we've got an outlet pipe and an inlet pipe uh, where valves have been fitted and closed so that all of the mass contained within uh, this tank and then uh, the piping up to the valves uh, stays fixed during a particular process. Um, interacting with the tank is what's called a stir, uh, where we have a shaft coming through, 
uh, that's continuously stirring uh, the substance inside in order to uh, maximize the internal interactions. Additionally, we may want to uh, keep uh, the process at a fixed temperature or, or bring it through some kind of heating or cooling cycle in order to get a desired result uh, or a desired uh, rate of conversion or something of that sort. So I've drawn some kind of either a cooling jacket or resistive heater that uh, allows us to have an energy transfer in the form of heat uh, into the, through the walls of the system. Uh, I didn't mention it previously, but uh, in purple here, I've drawn uh, a control surface which uh, essentially crosses through the pipes right before or at the valves, so the outlet valve and the inlet valve, and then surrounds the tank. It crosses through this heating element as well, and then also crosses through the shaft that goes into the system. So again, if I just look at the interactions through my control surface, I can see that there is no flow, there's no bulk flow of mass. Uh, again, I'm assuming that the tank is completely impermeable, so no diffusion uh, through the tank walls. Um, but I can see that there is going to be uh, a flux of energy um, through the surface where the uh, heating or cooling element is. And there's also going to be a flux of work um, through the control surface where the shaft um, bores through. So again, in this example, we've relaxed the constraint that was imposed on the isolated system of no energetic interactions, but we're still maintaining the fact that the system's mass uh, is fixed throughout whatever thermodynamic process we may take it through. Now, if we relax the, uh, the mass uh, constraint, we arrive at what's called a control volume, or an open system. And open system is uh, pretty intuitive, uh, or should be at this point. And what I've drawn uh, is an aircraft and zoomed in to its uh, jet engine or gas turbine engine and drawn uh, a few of the interactions uh, for this particular control volume. So I've drawn my control surface um, intersecting the inlet and outlet planes of the engine and then just kind of uh, following the cowl of the engine. Um, initially, we have a flux of air uh, into the engine. So this is a, a, a mass flux which actually carries energy with it. Um, Coming out of the engine, we have an exhaust flow, uh, so this is another flux uh, of mass and energy as well. Now, the way that I've drawn uh, the control volume actually cuts through a structural component uh, that would uh, mount where the engine would mount to the uh, wing structure, and because I've cut through this uh, particular surface, there's going to be a few interactions there as well. Uh, so, say if I were considering um, Newton's second law, to be applied to this control volume, I would have to account for all the forces that act on the control volume. Uh, so in addition to all of the uh, atmospheric pressure that may act around the entire control surface, there may be um, some suction pressure on the inlet side to the engine, um, a higher pressure on the outlet side, depending on how the engine is operated. Uh, but also there would be a shear force and normal force uh, as reaction forces internally uh, to the strut where I've control, uh, cut through uh, using my control surface. Um, so those are other interactions that I didn't account for in these two problems. Uh, there would be also one more flux uh, of mass uh, through the strut, so we need to deliver fuel to the engine uh, from the tanks that are in the wings down to the engine itself, and this is likely going to be routed through the strut. Uh, so again, the way that the control surface is drawn, there's going to be a flux uh, of fuel through uh, the control surface, so we need to account for that um, as well. And additionally, uh, the uh, hot section of the engine may be at a temperature that's higher than the ambient temperature, uh, so there could be some energy transfer uh, to the surrounding fluid uh, in, in the form of heat, okay, some convection heat loss to the surroundings. Uh, again, just want to emphasize though that for a control volume or open system, uh, we really have no constraints on the types uh, of energetic uh, or mass interactions with our thermodynamic system. Uh, there can be any type of, of mass flow. I haven't shown an, an example of diffusion uh, in this particular problem, but uh, that's a type of mass transfer, and we can handle it in, uh, when we're dealing with a control volume. There could be uh, energy fluxes in the form of heat or work. In this particular example, there is no work flux, uh, but there could be for a uh, control volume as well. But again, so energy interactions and mass interactions are allowed.
the Teaching Center, UF's Learning Resource Center.